We turn now to the stunning sentence tonight for a former police officer from Oklahoma City convicted of assaulting several women and the grandmother credited with cracking the case wide open. That former cop now sentenced to 263 years behind bars. His eyes closed in court as a judge condemned him to 263 years in prison. This is Hose Clark when he was first convicted. The defendant is guilty of the crime bursting of into tears, guilty of raping and assaulting eight women during his patrols as a cop. The attacks had gone on for months, with many of the victims poor and black with criminal records afraid to come forward. That was until Holzclaw abused this neighborhood grandmother. He just picked the wrong lady to stop that night. Yes. 21-year-old UWM student Nathan Potter was shot to death in a robbery last July as he walked to his River West apartment after a night out. He wasn't carrying any money. At his sentencing today, 19-year-old Shondell Jackson was facing a mandatory life term for pulling the trigger, but hoped for a chance at parole. At the sentencing today, prosecutors played this 12 News video of Jackson's February conviction when Jackson gestured to the Potter family several times, cursed at them, and as he was let out of court, our camera caught him smiling at the victim's family. Judge Next Rebecca Dallas gave him life without parole, sparking the outburst. <laughs> It all started when Jackson turned towards the Potter family, something deputies were watching for. The judge said Jackson's past behavior in court influenced his getting the maximum sentence. Jackson's angry family members today shouted support to him as he was led away, and one screamed at Potter's family as she left the courtroom. I didn't mean to kill Austin. Actually, I really didn't. You really think I did it? I didn't mean to hurt him. Dylan Shoemaker walked into a state Supreme Courtroom pleading his case, telling his victim's mother and the court he's remorseful for what he did. Shoemaker was sentenced Friday for beating 23-month-old Austin Smith last March. The record will show that you admitted on July, that on July 23, 2013, in a phone call to your mother from the holding center, you stated... And I got a quote from the court reporter. I am a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury, and they're going to feel sorry for me, end quote. Afterwards, Shoemaker was sentenced to 25 years to life behind bars. Life in prison without the possibility of parole. A judge handed down that sentence today to a man who admitted to killing a young woman and badly injuring her boyfriend in 2013. Court defendants serve a term of life without parole as to count for, for the offense of attempted murder. This reaction from a confessed killer was the last in a series of intense moments and exactly what the victim's families asked for. Diana Lovejoy was found guilty of conspiracy to commit murder and attempted murder of her estranged husband, Greg Mulvihill. It was an ambush in a rural part of Carlsbad, a sniper on the ground with a silencer waiting. She lowered her head toward the defense table for a few seconds, then sat back up. The first verdict then on the same charges against co-defendant Weldon McDavid Jr., a shooting instructor at a gun rage, and at the word guilty, you hear a thud, then weeping in the gallery. Lovejoy was unconscious for a time, then taken to a hospital for treatment. The defense said McDavid just wanted to scare him over the hill, that he wanted to shoot out the flashlight he was carrying, that if he wanted to kill, he would have. My thought from day one was if he was such a good shot, why did he miss the light? Like they. <laughs> she faces about 25 years to life, he 50 years to life because he's the one who pulled the trigger. 33 year old April Stone has broke down in tears this morning when she was sentenced for killing an elderly man. That you'd be sentenced to a determinate sentence of 21 years plus post release supervision of five years. <laughs> The mandatory surcharge of $300 is hereby imposed, as is the crime victim's assistance fee of $25 plus a $50 DNA data bank fee. All to be paid out of prison funds. You have 30 days within which to file a notice of appeal. Thank you. 
She pleaded guilty to killing 72-year-old Lincoln Burks during a robbery at his Cornwall Avenue apartment. He sentenced to 50 years in prison for brutally beating a toddler last year. 20-year-old Dustin Armstrong pleaded guilty to multiple acts of child endangerment. He is a coward, and forgiveness is not an option for me. Do you have anything you wish to say to me prior to my announcing what I'm going to do here today, sir? Doctors told Braden's mother they thought he was going to die. Braden has made a remarkable recovery, but his mother says he will likely face challenges from the beating for his entire life. Judge Joel Yates gave the guilty sentencing. Armstrong lost control of his emotions, dropped his head into his hands and cried. And you'll have plenty of time in the Iowa penal system to think about what you've done to this defenseless child. These two women were convicted for the death of a three-year-old girl. They were guilty of beating the toddler to the point of death. So if that isn't worth a life sentence, I'm not sure what is. We begin with that sentencing of a murderer, a man who killed a mother and two children in North Royalton in June of 2017. Family members of the victims told a three-judge panel that Brinkman Jr. should be sentenced to death. Brinkman brutally murdered 45-year-old Suzanne Taylor, 21-year-old Taylor Pfeiffer, and 19-year-old Kylie Pfeiffer. We do hereby impose the death penalty. Brinkman said in court he will not appeal the sentence. Accused cop killer Ashford Thompson breaks down in the courtroom. With tears streaming down his face, he told the judge he's frustrated with the legal process. Thompson is accused of shooting to death Twinsburg police officer Josh McTarian in July 2008. Thompson told a Summit County judge he's having a tough time in jail. He complained that he's not receiving his mail, that he's constantly being harassed. How can these people just do anything they want? They, they don't even follow their, their command the right way. I've been harassed for I don't know how long. I'm trying to hold it in just to get this over with. Thompson has been through a number of lawyers. His current attorney, Kerry O'Brien, told the judge he's planning on filing an additional 40 motions. The judge agreed to give him one more week to prepare. Faced with the death penalty, an exasperated Thompson told the judge he worried about getting a fair trial. Your Honor, just, just execute me then because I can't get any kind of justice. I'm tired. I'm about to end up my rope. And hereby sentences Ashford Thompson on merged counts one and two to death for the aggravated murder of Joshua McTarian. A man convicted of a violent crime here on campus got his long sentence today and he did break down. 21-year-old Brandon Spencer of Inglewood bangs his head as a judge sentences him to 40 years to life after he was convicted of shooting a rival gang member at a 2012 Halloween party on the USC campus. Today, in L.A. Superior Court, Spencer begged for mercy from Judge Edmund Clark Jr. before sentencing. I'm sorry for what happened here, but I can't do life in prison. And I'm not a bad person, but... I made mistakes. During sentencing, Spencer completely broke down. The minimum period of parole eligibility is 15 years plus 25 years of life in accordance with Penal Code Section 12022.53D. This is to be concurrent. Michael Marin graduated from Yale Law School, had a lucrative career working around the world for Wall Street investment banks, making several million dollars. He collected Picasso artwork drove a Rolls Royce and flew his own plane. A jury convicted Marin of arson. He's facing between 7 and 21 years in prison. After he appears to swallow something after the verdict is read, notice as he reaches down and appears to get something from his bag. He then wipes his face, swallows something and appears to swallow again. But eight minutes later, Marin starts convulsing and collapses. Even though it's not been officially determined what killed Michael Marin, it's believed Marin swallowed some type of poison. Seaman had been accused in the arson deaths of 10-year-old Corinne Gump and her grandparents, Bill and Judy Schmidt, March 30th, two years ago. 
That same day, Seaman had been set to go on trial accused of raping the young girl, a crime that would have brought a mandatory life sentence without parole if he had been convicted. We were back at our office and heard the same news everybody else heard, that he had thrown himself off the fourth floor balcony. This security camera video provided by the sheriff's office shows deputies escorting Seaman, who was dressed in civilian clothing, when he suddenly dives headfirst over the ledge. He landed on the floor of the rotunda, four stories below. Are we going to change anything? Well, we're going to look at that, obviously, but uh, I'm certainly not going to lose sleep over this one. In Chad, we trust. Hit subscribe now, that's a must. Chad Munch. Uh huh. Let's go. Sit back and whine, I expose the fakes every single time. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know what I came to do. We gon' share a laugh at every single fool. Every now, fool. hop in the driver's seat. Driver. Come witness the masterpiece. Master. Got these fakes all mad at me. Yeah. Be real, you got to be the psychic liars, fake gurus. So crazy, must be cuckoo. Guarantee you gon' laugh a bunch. Yeah, yeah. Here with the child munch.